Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be producing some regression assumption plots using the library called Performance. These are really attractive looking plots and even provide little summary explanations of whether the assumptions from our regression have been met. So we need two packages. Performance is where the actual uh, functions that we're going to be using are, but this also calls on the package called C. So if you don't have those installed, go to packages, hit install, type them in, install them. Once we've got them in there, we run them. All of this code is going to be on my website. I will link it up below. And so we're going to make a regression. The first thing we're going to do is look at the traditional plots. So the plots that are normally generates out of a regression for us. We're just using built-in data, using the empty cars data set, and we have a fairly basic regression. We've got a interaction term in there. It's probably a little bit unnecessary. This is all very much just for demonstration purposes. So we will make our regression model. And when we hit plot, then we get the command saying hit return to see the next plot. We'll go over to the viewer and we'll hit return and gives us residuals versus fitted. Uh, we can see that the data is a little bit sparse. It certainly all seems to have residuals disappearing down below zero here. Uh, actually, we've got these two up the top here. So it starts to get a little bit spread out, but we've got to always be careful that when we've got sparse data, we can get these funny looking patterns. And we just have to cycle through and look at each of the plots one by one. We've got our QQ plot, roughly a straight line, kind of veers off on the tails a little bit. Uh, we've got our square root of standard residuals versus our fitted values. So with this one, we can see a bit of a dip here. We're wanting to see a patternless band. And then we hit return. And our last one, we've got leverage against our residuals. So problematic is where we have a large residual that has a lot of leverage because that's where it is going to skew our results. Now, if we want to see all of these plots together, uh, there's a few ways we can do it. One is the patchwork package. Another is just with par and MF row. We can set our plotting up so that it is a two by two matrix with our four plots. So if we run that and we can see that we have our four plots presented there in a single graphic, which is nice. This is a pretty common way of doing it, uh, seeing them all at once. If we want to turn our graphics window back to single, we just change that back to 1-1. One, one. So what we're going to do now is we are going to use the check model. And it is going to produce a series of very, very nice plots for us. So check underscore model, name of our regression model. Run that and it is going to produce us these plots. We can see that it gives us six plots. And for each one, in addition to the title and what's in it, it gives us a description of what we should be looking for as well, which is really quite handy, particularly if we are a newer analyst, we might forget uh, or be not quite so sure what we're looking for. If we click on zoom, we can zoom in there. Uh, so not only does it give those same ones we were looking at previously, uh, but it also gives us this posterior predictive check, really just comparing across the uh, MPG variable, uh, the density. And what we're wanting to see is just patterns that are following the observed data. Uh, when we look at our model predicted versions, doesn't look too bad there. Uh, we've got our residuals versus fitted values uh, to check our homogeneity of variance and our linearity. We have the same leverage versus residuals for our influential observations. Uh, we've got our QQ plot looking for the straight line. But we also have the measures, the VIF, uh, the measures of collinearity. And so that's another really helpful one. And here we can see that we actually have some pretty high measures for a couple of our variables, it's maybe something worth investigating more. So I really like this package. It presents the graphs more attractively and then also with the just a little bit of uh, reminder text here, which is really helpful. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that if we are zoomed in too far, and this is something that I noticed with a couple of help boards, 
Uh, so if we zoom in a couple of times uh, and we try running it, we can end up with this error message about making the windows larger. So it does seem to have a minor issue around the uh, being able to deal with a zoomed in window. But if we zoom that out again, then it will draw us our plots. That's the only issue that I've really run into with this. Uh, the package also has just some ba very basic functions to be able to check normality, heteroscedasticity, and so on. So if we have a look at check normality, it tells us it's okay, residuals appear normally distributed, gives us a p-value. Uh, doesn't tell us what the p-value is, so we need to go into the help. So question mark just to get into the help. Uh, and it tells us that the p-value, what it is being generated from. With these, need to do a little bit of that the first time through just to check what's going on. And so we can see here, it's just calling the Shapiro-Wilkes test, which is the normal way we would go about this. Uh, again, if we check the quality of variance, gives us a warning there, gives us a p-value. So again, if we go into the help, it tells us what it is testing. I uh, wasn't really uh, familiar with that one, so we can go and do some research if we want to check on what that one is. But a yeah, really handy little package performance, just does a whole lot of regression checking. But the one that I think would be most useful is uh, being able to produce these really nice looking plots.